Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Evan with PodPeak, and in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite custom actions that I use for podcast production in Reaper. Let's dive in. Welcome to PodPeak, where I talk about recording, editing, and sound design for music production, podcasts, and film. If you're new to the channel, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and make sure and ding that bell so you can get notified every time I put out some new content. So in my work, I do all forms of podcast production, from coming up with show ideas and writing scripts, to on-site and remote recording, as well as editing, sound design, and post-production. This video is gonna focus more on the editing and post-production aspect of podcasting, as that tends to be the most tedious and time-consuming part of the process. So I'm gonna demonstrate a handful of my favorite custom actions that I use for podcast production, and I'm also gonna show you how I created those custom actions. And just a quick note, if you need some basics on actions and custom actions, I would highly recommend checking out these two videos by Kenny Joya, as he goes over them from A to Z, and you're gonna learn everything you need to know. And I'll also leave links to those down below. So here we are in a Reaper session. The first thing you'll notice is that I've customized my Reaper toolbars and buttons. You can disregard that, but understand that everything I'll show you will work really well with Reaper's default download. So let's talk briefly about custom actions. Now remember, anything that can be done in Reaper involves an action. Keyboard shortcuts, toolbar buttons, or menu items all perform actions. But custom actions are even more powerful because they give us the ability to combine multiple actions into one keystroke, which can really save a lot of time, especially if you're an audio editor, a sound designer, or in our case, a podcast producer. So let me show you a few custom actions that I've built that save me a lot of time when I'm editing and producing podcasts. The first custom action I'm gonna show you will really come in handy if you wanna clean up an interview or narration quickly. I call it ripple edit within time selection and play. So I have a raw unedited interview that I wanna clean up for use in a podcast episode. So if I was more of a beginner, I'd listen through and every time I heard something I didn't like, I'd stop, make splits at each end of the section I wanted to cut out, delete that section, then take my cursor and drag them over, crossfade it, then move my cursor and play it back to make sure it sounds good. That's a lot of steps. But with my custom action, ripple edit within time selection and play, it achieves all of these steps in just one keystroke. So I'll listen back. Okay, I wanna cut this section out. So I'll time select it, hit the keystroke, and it does it all just like that. As you're moving through the interview, you can really save a lot of time. And finally, here's a screenshot of the custom action in case you'd like to use it or customize it even more to your liking. So the next custom action I'm gonna show you is really useful when you're working off of scripts or transcripts that have time codes or timestamps. It's called auto copy to next track within time selection, mute original. For example, I often do work for clients who are doing all of the writing for the podcast. They'll send me a script with timestamps and utilizing that, I go through and pull out the sections of audio they need for the show. So if I was more of a beginner, I'd find the timestamp section of audio, make splits at each end of the section, drag it down to a new track, and then go back up and mute the original. But with my custom action, I simply make a time selection of the audio I wanna cut, hit the keystroke, and the custom action is initiated in a second. As you can see, I'm moving through the audio. This is a very efficient and time-saving way to go. Then when everything is done, it's all on its own track, ready to export or whatever you might wanna do with it. And here's a screenshot of that custom action. A quick note, for this custom action to work, you need to make a comp track that sits below the track you're cutting from. Also, if you're working on a project that has a lot of other tracks on it, it helps to move those unused tracks to the track manager and mute them to keep your arrangement clean and tidy. Okay. Now the next custom action I'm gonna show you ties directly into our previous custom action. So we have all our audio we've pulled from the timestamps. Normally what I do is move these items closer together and export them to send them to a client that I'm working with or to use in another project. So if I was more of a beginner, I would manually drag each of these items together, 
And because of the way I like to work, I would drag all of them to the beginning of the project. Then I'd be ready to export. But with my custom action, reposition items move to start, I just select the track, hit the keystroke, make sure my space settings are correct, and boom, it automatically moves every item to the beginning and spaces them to my desired specification. Pretty cool. And here's a screenshot of that custom action. So the next couple custom actions I'm going to show you are aimed more at sound designers or people that make music using uh, MIDI virtual instruments. For example, I've got an instance of Output Arcade pulled up, and I've just recorded a drum sample that I like and I want to use it. So you could just keep the track as a MIDI file, but personally, I like to print things as I go because it saves CPU usage on my computer, and overall, it helps my session run faster. So let's say I want to print this MIDI track to audio, but save the MIDI file and the virtual instrument in case I want to go back and make changes later. Select the track, go to the actions list, in the filter, type in render stereo mute, and select the action render tracks to stereo post fader stem tracks and mute original. Select the action and you'll see that it printed the MIDI track to audio and muted the original. But for my workflow, I like to hide that original MIDI track in the track manager so I can access it at a later time, but it also frees up space on my arrange window. So to do that, I'll pull up the track manager and hide the original MIDI file to be accessed at a later time. But with my custom action, Print Stereo, I select a track, hit the keystroke, and it prints the audio from my MIDI track and automatically mutes and hides the original MIDI track in the track manager. And here's a screenshot of that custom action. And the last custom action I want to show you is really just a play on the previous one. Sometimes I like to work quickly, or I'm making a really simple piece of music that I don't necessarily want to save the original. With my custom action, Print Stereo Delete, it prints the MIDI track, and instead of muting and hiding the original MIDI track in the track manager, it simply deletes it. And here's a screenshot of that custom action. So I hope you got some value out of this video today. Taking the time to learn the actions in Reaper and then transferring those skills into making custom actions is truly a game changer. By implementing some of the tricks that I demonstrated today and tweaking those or maybe creating your own custom actions, you're literally going to save hours and hours of your life, which in turn is just going to free up more time for creativity. It's a win-win situation. All right. So make sure and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure and ding that bell so you get notified every time I put out a new piece of content. Take care of yourselves, have some good holidays, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.